years and I got through with it all right. I made quite some good friends again with the butcher. So uh, things went pretty smooth. We went to Honolulu. And in Honolulu, going around the world, I decided that's the best chance of seeing my parents when we get to Europe. So from Honolulu, I sent an airmail letter to Germany telling them that to send me, about to ride me to Bombay by such and such a time when we get there, uh, telling me whether they are willing to come down to Genoa and I will make arrangements to have hotel reservations and money there. Because at that time with Hitler and his regulations, I wasn't sure whether they could get any money out of Germany. Okay, we went from Honolulu to Yokohama and uh, Tokyo, I saw Tokyo at that time, and Kobe. Then uh, we went on down to the Philippines. From Manila, we went on down to Singapore. And there's another port in between. I don't know which one it was. And from Singapore to Penang. And in all these foreign exotic ports, I really had a wonderful time sightseeing. I always tried to get the job as a second baker which required me to work at night. So when we came into a port, the day was mine. And sightseeing, of course, that was the important thing for me. Sure, I never saw any of the nightlife in these ports, but uh, looking back, I saw enough of it. So I know now that I didn't miss very much. <coughs> From Penang, Calcutta, and then down to Colombo in Ceylon, in Ceylon, there I uh, went to on a sightseeing tour and we ended up in a Buddhist temple. <coughs> and the uh, keeper in the temple, he gave us a big lecture on the similarity between Hinduism and the uh, Christian religion, pointing out that uh, after Buddha succeeded 500 years before Christ, and he made such a success. The Jews in uh, Israel or Palestine, who even at that time were known to be very smart, they recognized the good thing when they saw it and formed the same kind of religion. And he pointed out a great similarity between Hinduism and Buddhism and Christianity. It was interesting. I did a lot of sightseeing there. I was uh, really surprised at some of the fakers which worked on the street and uh, made some uh, odd kind of uh, tricks like having a snake come out or having a tree go up and stuff like that. Very, very interesting. It was my first trip down into these areas and I really thought it was wonderful. Well, from there we went up to Bombay, and we got into Bombay uh, at an odd time. They had a heavy storm and a heavy tide, and the water, the tide, came in faster than our ship. And before we realized it, a big wave just re rolled right over the deck, the main deck. And all the portholes that were open, they were just uh, taking in water and uh, everything was swamped. Uh, kind of an odd situation. Uh, we even had live fish on the deck from that heavy wave. This of course meant a lot of clean up in the, in the galley and in the bake shop. And I really had to work after this flood. I had one of, was one of these interesting things. Bombay is a, was a beautiful city as far as I'm concerned. The British influence was seen where they had uh, real magnificent buildings in the Indian style and still everything was under British control so it was kept very orderly and very neat. On the sightseeing tour of course we went through the uh, native sections 
I still remember the red light district where all the girls there uh, had a little cubby hole with an iron grating in front, hanging out their wares. Great life for a young man in those days. And of course I saw the Parsi towers where they put the, uh, the bodies of the dead persons and the, uh, uh, well, the, the birds, ravens and buzzards would eat up all the flesh until they are just the bones left and I guess the bones then are just buried or whatever they do with them I don't know but anyway there were three of these uh, towers and uh, on that conducted tour they showed us of course there are many many other things in Bombay worth seeing museum buildings all these things uh, made Bombay a very interesting city also uh, being under strict English control, there was also strict discrimination, racial discrimination. On the dark, there were the washrooms and toilets marked white officers, white seamen, and natives. And there was a strict uh, separation there. Nobody even dreamt of trying to go from one area to another. And it worked out quite peacefully. Well, we left uh, Bombay <coughs> and went over to the Red Sea. The, it, we came there just after they had a severe sandstorm, so the sea was actually red from the sand that had blown over from the desert. Quite an interesting sight. Then we went to Suez and uh, stopped there for a little while, long enough to look around. Some of the passengers uh, managed it, went ashore there and took a camel route from Suez to, Alex to Alexandria. The ship, however, went through the uh, Suez Canal. The next morning, when I was almost finished with my work, I still worked at night, I looked out through the porthole and there I saw the levee alongside the canal and the, the sun just coming up through the shadow of our ship against the levee, very sharp outline of our ship uh, against the levee and on top, riding right above the smokestack of our ship, there was a uh, Arab on a camel riding along on the levee. I sure hoped I could have gotten my camera fast enough to take that picture. It was one of the sites I will always remember. Well, then we went into Port Said, and that was an interesting ship, an uh, interesting place. Uh, it had the reputation of being rather wild because uh, all the seamen, well, the seamen's area was always kind of crummy, and uh, seamen from all the world would hang around enjoying themselves raising hell if necessary. It was interesting. We took on a lot of uh, fresh vegetables. I don't know why that was. And uh, I probably ate too much of the fresh vegetables and got a real bad case of diarrhea, I suppose. In fact, so bad that I couldn't work for one night. And that never happened before. And especially at this time, after I had told the chief steward that I wanted to take off a day in Genoa when my parents were there, I didn't want to take off any time. Oh, I forgot in Bombay, of course, I went down to Thomas Cook's and Son and uh, paid the reservation for my parents in a hotel in Genoa and also had sent some money to Cooks and Son office in Genoa, so we would have enough money to get, al get along. So all these uh, arrangements worked out very well. Anyway, we left Port Said and went on through the Mediterranean, went between Sicily and Italy, and there in, on the Sic Sicilian coast, there we saw 
uh, in the middle of town, a big monument with Il Duce there. Of course, our seamen, most of them were rather uh, socialistically inclined. They were just uh, cursing El, at Il Duce, but had nothing to do. Kept on going, and we went past a uh, uh, Vesuvius, I mean, not a Vesuvius, the uh, Mount Stromboli. Uh, volcano. Beautiful site. Small island, just one big cone, Stromboli. At the base of it, some small, very small villages. And from there, the blue Mediterranean on up to Naples. In Naples, of course, big sightseeing place. Uh, great place for seamen to get rid of their money because the Sicilian, uh, the Neapolitans were known to be good pickpockets. Oh, I had my experience too, but uh, that didn't get anything out of me. Went up to Mount Vesuvius and went around to all the interesting places, including some churches, which now I would appreciate more than I'd appreciate then because of the uh, art objects in there. The museum was very interesting, but all of it was kind of crummy, typical Italian, sloppy, dirty. And yet there was a blue sea and uh, Vesuvius, uh, and the whole scenery was just beautiful, just like you see it on the postal cards. If you just keep your eye away from the dirt, which is typical of the southern Italian towns, From Naples, we went up to Genoa. The boat got into Genoa in the morning around 6 o'clock. I had finished my work and I was standing up there and just changing my clothes when the butcher came running down and yelled, Hey, bake, come on up, your parents are down here. And so I went up there, the boat hadn't even really tied up yet, and there I saw my parents down in the dark and was waving and of course my mother she almost cried because she saw me. Well, I waited until the boat was tied up and I was the first one off and of course everybody gave me a pat on the shoulder, told me to have a good time and uh, everybody was with me. Well, I saw my parents and we went straight up to the hotel which uh, they of course had uh, found all right. And then I took a room myself in the hotel. We had breakfast together. From there on, of course, it was a day and a half, just uh, going around with my parents for morning after breakfast. Then a nice long walk. We went to the Campo Santo, that's the cemetery, to look at a beautiful uh, statues in there. There was one uh, with a new marker on it of a young Italian man who was killed in Abyssinia and my father and I philosophized on the other nonsense of fighting down there but at that time my father also told me that it looks very very bad as far as war situation in Germany and he that time mentioned if they ever have a war all of Germany will really be finished but we didn't talk very much about war. We, we went sightseeing. And uh, in the afternoon, we would put my mother down in one of these nice uh, confectionaries and order the waiters to see that she has all the ice cream she wants. And then my father and I would go for a long walk through the city. Genoa is a beautiful city, has some beautiful monuments like churches. And then, it, of course, it has that uh, steep uh, mountain there with a restaurant up on top, we had to go up there. Anyway, it was sightseeing and we went along down to, I think, uh, Nervi is one place along the Italian uh, Riviera. It's beautiful and uh, I know my parents really enjoyed it. But everything, good, every good thing comes to an end. Uh, I made sure that uh, my father had enough money because we picked it up at 
Thomas Cook's office. I left and they from there went on to 